you guys, Rob from the Off Grid Tiny House. Current time, temps, let's check it out. 78.3 inside the tiny house, 75 out. I'm gonna turn the air on. 25.7 indoor, 24.3 outdoor. So, uh, it's been a while since I've been here. The tiny house construction zone. Um, but guess what I'm gonna do? Turn the off-grid air conditioning on. Because I'm gonna be working over here, so I'm gonna have the, uh, I changed the damper so it's blowing over here. Sweet. Try that at your place, Troy. Guess you're not off the grid. <laughs> so anyways, um, picked up a couple eight inch fillet knives from the local Dollarama store, as well as a pair of gloves. And I'm gonna show you what I'll be doing with these uh, later on in the video. But first, let's go take a look at the tiny house. Uh, my battery was fully topped off, uh, so that's why I'm turning the air on. Everything's closed up in the tiny house. We did catch a crap ton more water, guys. So my new rain harvesting setup is working fabulous. Um, let's see, what is the uh, 50, whoops. Can you see? So well over 50 gallons. Um, probably closing in on 60 gallons caught. Um, and then I still have this amount up top, which is, um, there's 75 gallons, there's 100, so probably 90, 90 gallons. Pretty cool, pretty sweet. So tiny house construction zone, guys. Um, it's going to be like this for a while. And I'm going to explain to you what's my the uh, madness here behind everything. And it's it's Canada Day, guys. So uh, happy Canada Day, everybody. Um, so up here, guys. Uh, by the way, the bleach did a fabulous job of killing all the mold and such. So that's a good thing. But the main concern here at the Offer Tiny House, major major flaw. And I think I covered this already. That piece of gray that you see there is the tiny house roof. You know why I know that? Because when I put my fingers on it, it's a, the roof is aluminum and it conducts heat pretty decently. And I can feel the heat as opposed to not feeling anything here because that's lumber. But the problem is I have to remove this two by four um, and all the 2x4s that are attached to the spray foam in the tiny house because in the winter time this uh, metal aluminum will be freezing because outside in the winter time it will be freezing and when it hits the hot warm air in here from the barrel stove it'll start sweating producing what water which then will produce mold. So we can't have that. So I'm gonna have to somehow pull this two by four out of here. Now, it's gonna be difficult. I'm gonna tell you right now, guys. So the plan is, I'm gonna take my fillet knife and carefully cut the foam away from the top of the two by four, all the way down. And then what I plan on doing is I'm just gonna cut my studs. Boom, boom, about this, this, this much up. And the reason for that is, instead of taking a sawzall and cutting through the screws, which will be a nightmare, if I cut these down lower, I can use these as leverage bars to, so when I try to reef on these things upwards, it'll reef the two by four upwards and downwards, and I'll have something to pull this off of with basically. Now I have to do this throughout the tiny house guys so I'm gonna probably struggle at first here to get going and there's no doubt there but uh, gotta do what I gotta do. It has to be repaired or the tiny house is El Dunzo. I have to pull this all the, this entire 2x4 out of here and the reason is of course I can't see any mold right now but in between the aluminum roof 
And that 2x4, I guarantee in between that seam, when I pull that 2x4 off, it's going to be molded. Because that thing would have been sweating, and yeah, not good. Now, also, um, there's some aluminum tape up here. What I'm going to do while this is all open, I'm going to rocker guard each rivet hole as well, and probably pull this tape off and rivet that as well, because it looked like it's been leaking down through there anyways. All of them. See the stains? So I'm going to rocker guard all those eventually too, and I think I have, yes I do, I have some left, but I'll have to buy another can for sure. So, off-grid air conditioner is going to be running in here. I'll probably run this fan a little bit too, but for now, I'm going to have to bring my heavy big ladder over here because the stool ain't going to cut it for this, and I'm going to have to take my fillet knife and carefully fillet the foam away from the 2x4 and fix this major disaster. Not fun guys, not fun. So see Alrighty, you guys, guys so I've taken the fillet knife, works really well by the way, sliced just above the 2x4 all the way to about here. I'm going to try to get um, further down to about here at least because I'm going to end up cutting these anyways. Um, once, and I gotta set the depth of my circular saw. Gonna have to cut the studs, unfortunately, but has to be done. And then I'll use the leverage from the studs to kind of reef up and pull that two by four out of there, hopefully. Now, one of the major deals is my lights and this ceiling fan. Um, yeah, gonna be trouble. So what I'm gonna do is go up here and shut this switch off to the ceiling fan first and uh, go from there and a lot of the wire is strapped to this little stick of wood so I'll see what happens but I'll probably have to end up moving it over or just taking it completely down um, for now it's just the way it is and it's a, it looks like crap anyways <laughs> so not too bad so I'm gonna I'm gonna set my depth on my circular saw and cut about I don't know somewhere up here just so I can have a grab hold a handhold on those uh, sticks so I can reef that two by four out of there hopefully and this one down here is gonna be tricky as well because um, uh, it's holding up this section here so I'll probably just saw this off this 2x4 and go from there um, it is what it is at this point and uh, once I pull this 2x4 down this will be the first piece I take down so it'll be a test piece to see how gross the other side of this 2x4 is with possible mold so yeah wild stuff guys okay guys so um, my saw blade can't cut through all the way through the 2x4 so that means I had to run home and bug my dad for his sawzall so I got his charger I got a bunch of lithium batteries and a bunch of blades and what I'm gonna do is put the proper uh, length blade in and zip through the rest of this each one and it shouldn't be too bad because I did the majority of the work with the circular saw and once that's done, I can start going ahead and pulling this 2x4 right out of here. Um, I still got to remove this stick though before then, but I'm going to cut these with the saws all next and go from there. Now the tiny house is going to be a disaster zone for a long while. I'm trying to do at least get the bedroom section done. Like if I can get this 2x4 pulled out of here, right past my cabinet here, that section will be done and I can at least foam it after and put insulation in and put the walls back in later. Now, um, my solar is doing so well that it's over -volted, um, which is just wonderful. Uh, even with the air conditioning running on full tilt boogie, I have so much power coming in from those two solar panels that I'm over -volting under an extreme heavy load. Yeah. Just wonderful. I love it. <laughs> yeah, eat your heart out, Troy. <laughs> eat your heart out, buddy. Eat it out.
Now, uh, I'm gonna continue on cutting. I'm not probably not gonna film too much of it, guys, because it's me cutting wood, big deal. Um, but I'll give you updates like these as we go, okay? See you in a bit.